the right way to think about it is in terms of a phrase that he picks up from the Greek poet Pindar. We've mentioned it before. It's a very simple phrase. It says, become who you are. Well, that's a fascinating notion. It's not be who you are, the kind of uh, unhelpful advice that teenagers get from their parents when they're going out on a date and they're told, just be yourself, dear. Uh, they get a, right, a rightful look of, what? <laughs> on the other hand, there's a sense in which to say, be who you are, implies a kind of stasis, something that doesn't change. For Nietzsche, the sort of line between freedom and unfreedom, between choice and lack of choice, here gets very blurry, because what he wants to say is, that we are all born with certain sorts of abilities, talents, potentials, some more, some less, but virtually none of us is simply raised in such a way or thrown in such circumstances that these simply emerge. Rather, it's the case that cultivating who one is is a lifelong effort that when he says in The Birth of Science, sorry, when he says in The Birth of Tragedy, life is to be justified only as an aesthetic phenomenon. And the theme that sort of goes through, live your life as a work of art. What's implied there is something very much like Goethe's notion of freedom within limitation. That the creativity of the individual is to a large extent creating oneself, but not on a blank canvas with a set of oil paints and the instructions Anything goes, certainly a very popular American belief, something that one can read rather easily in the philosophy of Sartre, but quite to the contrary. It's a very limited canvas, and it's a very limited palette. And what one can paint is as restricted as, for example, one of those Japanese paintings where you only get one line, that line being your life.